Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Fascinating to see you, and it is very inspiring to be here. Uh, I feel like I'm almost ready to fly. <laughs> so, you can see my background here. I'm working at University of East Anglia, uh, but I also teach at University of Cambridge during summers. I'm interested in creativity, design thinking, entrepreneurship, uh, and I teach creativity and personal development courses. So here is our agenda. Uh, first of all, let me just remind you, you will be needing uh, some papers as well as pencils or pens, uh, because I want you to write up very quickly, fairly quickly. We will be uh, doing a series of very fast-paced exercises. So I want you to be ready for a really fast-paced workshop. That means you will be working in clusters. These clusters could be two, three, or four people. But the requirement is I want you to go meet somebody that you have not met before as much as possible. So try to meet new people in each activity. And please change the clusters in each activity. So ideally, everybody should meet, try to meet one another and try to work with one another at some point. I'll start with the hackathon part. Uh, this is what I start my lectures at UEA. These are the interesting things that I have learned, stumbled upon, pondered. Uh, here was the challenge. I wanted to keep learning myself and disrupt myself and I decided to spend at least 10 hours every week to learn about exciting new things, interesting things and share them at the start of my classes. So it was a promise that I made to myself and as a result of the process I ended up learning about new things and uh, learning continuously and uh, learn to disrupt myself continuously every day, every week. These are some of the things that I come across. For example, guess the average daily media consumption of an adult in the United States. You can see it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it is 10 hours, 39 minutes. So this is much more than sleep. This includes all the internet, we are bombarded with media, information, it includes all of them. So what does this mean? We live in a hyper-connected, noisy, uh, content-saturated, advertising-dominated era. And there is an overload of change, technology, uh, innovation, speed, and uh, the most precious thing is our attention. And that's why they call this the attention economy. So brands in this era, they are trying to curate uh, adventures and surprises, journeys of enchantment, surprise, humor, adventure. These have become more and more important in the experience economy. Storytelling and story doing that are rooted in humanity. So this is the new paradigm. And the feature belongs to, this is by Daniel Pink, in his book, A Whole New Mind, he says the feature belongs to these creators, entrepreneurs, empathizers, uh, storytellers, meaning makers, artists, big picture thinkers, designers. These people will shape the feature and we need six uh, right brain capabilities, right brain capabilities, design, story, symphony, empathy, play and meaning. These are the new era uh, right brain capabilities for the conceptual age. And the business landscape is changing rapidly. These are all from my notebook. I uh, love doodling, so I doodle this. Um, and you can see you can see more of these samples here if you're interested. So feel free to have a look. So the landscape is shifting. The feature of business is in, of course, innovation, entrepreneurial cultures, creative cultures, 
startup cultures, agility. So every business is becoming like an incubator. Uh, and it looks like a hackathon. And it looks like a, uh, every business is looking like co-working spaces. And we need to disrupt and hack ourselves continuously in this new era. And we need to consider redesigning our lives. This is the IBM survey. They asked CEOs what will be the most important leadership qualities over the next five years. And as you see, at the top is creativity. 60% think that creativity will be very important. So when we look at becoming an entrepreneur, uh, it is a very tough journey. And it requires a certain level of being crazy. And I really want to congratulate you guys uh, for having the courage to dream about possibilities and starting a new journey. Uh, so what I want is, please uh, write down your emails on a piece of paper so that I can send you the presentation files and we can keep in touch. So I'll be sending you the slides. I'll be talking about three tools at the start. The first tool is disrupting yourself. So we need to spend every day uh, at least half an hour or one hour for our own learning and developing skills based on our interests and share that with our friends. Use that time to go out of our comfort zones and develop new skills. and solve a challenging issue and really invest in our skills. The tool, second tool is morning pages. Last week, I attended a workshop. It was called The Artist's Way at the heart of London. And this is the workbook by Julia Cameron, if you want to have a look. So, again. So, The Artist's Way is sold more than five million copies. And Julia Cameron came to London and offered this workshop to whole artists. I met designers, fashion people, um, novelists, award-winning actors, musical people. So uh, <coughs> it was a fabulous workshop. But uh, she says, Julia Cameron says, when you get up in the morning, the first you should do is write up your morning pages. Spend half an hour. Write non-stop for three pages. This will be your stream of consciousness. Whatever comes into your mind, just write it up. No censor, free writing, free flow. Why do we do this? It will help you to really focus, gather your thoughts. If you have some worries, anxieties, you cannot really concentrate on your work, you put all of them on paper. And it helps you to go deeper and to really uh, send signals to the universe on what you need to do on that day. So try this and see what happens. I have been doing this and keeping journals for the last 15 years. I always carry them with me. So always carrying your journal, note taking, recording your thoughts, ideas, capturing them uh, is a very important and valuable tool, I think. The last tool is a creative date with yourself. Do this every week, two to three hours every week. Spend time with yourself. This has to be alone, to be receptive to signals of creativity. So do something that you love. You can go to cinema or an artistic event Go to a gallery, museum perhaps, have fun, pursue your interest, get inspired, but it will be your luxury hour and invest at least two, two hours in yourself in these activities every week. What if, if you have deadlines? Still do this. Some people say if you have a lot of deadlines, double this, double the dates with yourself because you will be more energized, more inspired. And then you have these record your thoughts, ideas. 
reflections. So let's start with our first conversation, Shark Tank page. I love this program. You can learn so much about entrepreneurship. Uh, it is broadcast in the United States. It's the Dragon Dan of the United States, as you know. And there are two seasons on Netflix, if you want to catch up. And it is really worth it. So here are two examples on pitches. So here is another example. And you will be doing your own pitch in a minute. Share your ideas. But here is another example. I love these children who are, are entrepreneurial. So here's another example. So this is Shark Tank. And you can find two seasons on Netflix. So here is the first activity that we will do together. You will be thinking of your own business idea and you will share it with clusters. I want you to, so in just one minute, what is your idea? What needs do you try to solve? And why is this idea unique? So I want you to find two people that you do not know or you have not met yet. And we have to be really quick. Let's work in clusters of three. You, in one minute, you will be sharing your idea. Okay? So let's find two people that you don't know. Start the activity. Let's continue with the second activity, second conversation. It is called three I round. Three I round. Inspiring innovative ideas. So we will share inspiring innovative ideas that we come across with one another in clusters. But we will change the clusters, okay? And in this time, I want clusters of four people and you will change, go meet other people again, yeah? But before we start, here are some examples. Heineken, beer bottles can be used as bricks since long time, as you can see. This is one example. Another example might be anything you come across, really. These can be inspiring, innovative ideas around you. Are capturing design examples or advertisements, like this one. Or it might be some creative product, service ideas, such as this customizable product or it can be more high-tech so I'm based in Norwich I live in Norwich and there is a restaurant a cool one Binon, near my house it has no menu there is no menu they just cook whatever it is available surprise dishes if you want to have them uh, you say yes bring them if you don't want to have them you say no and for each yes they put a stamp okay so that's the format. It is called Bna, and I think it's a creative one. Or you might think of a cool new app that you have come across. Share about that app. Or it might be some play that you have seen and it inspired you. You love that play, and you want to talk about it. So, so it doesn't have to be business. Something that inspired you, any innovative, inspiring idea, Recently, that you have come across, please try to find it now. I want you to take notes about that idea. Capture it in a few words. How would you present it? So write it down. What kind of ideas did you come across recently? Let's say in the last week or in the last 10 days. Think of some ideas. Write down some of them. Take some quick notes to prepare for the exercise. So if you have thought of an idea, if you have already written it, you might go and find your cluster. 
go meet new people, you will be working in clusters of four, four people. Please change your clusters. Attention, please. How many clusters have finished? Did everybody present? Okay. How many clusters would finish in two minutes? How many clusters would finish in three minutes? Four minutes? Okay. So, this is a four minute notice. Okay. In four minutes we'll finish. And please write your popcorns on a piece of paper, give it to your friends. And feel free to get each other's contact details. Let's continue with the third list for now. What are the specific visions in your life and career that you would love to see happening? In particular, your entrepreneurial dreams. What are they? Make a list of them. Make a list of all your wishes, projects, goals, desires, visions, things that you would love to see happening. Make a list. Write that. Write them down. So why do we do this? We are writing these down because we want these to be as specific as possible. The more we write these clearly, the more we are closer to bringing them to reality. That's why note taking is very critical. You should always keep a notebook. Always write down your goals, your dreams, your visions, what do you need to develop, what do you need to improve, and create your own projects, dreams, goals. So we want to write them because we want to reach resolution. We want to identify them. And writing is the best way to go forward with these. That's why we are doing this. So please try to brainstorm all the things that you would love to see happening in your life, in your career, in your entrepreneurial dream. Try to be as specific as possible. As these are your dreams, don't keep them limited. For example, you can say, I will travel to at least 30 different countries in my lifetime. So try to stretch. This is your space to dream. So there are no limits. Okay, let us stop here. You can continue this list at home. Now I want you to form clusters of three new people. Go out, find new people that you do not know, you haven't met yet. Form clusters of three, please. So, are you ready? You will be sharing all three lists of yours quickly. You don't have to share all of them. Give a glimpse of the top ones for each list, okay? Each person has about two minutes to share their own list. And as you listen, please again write popcorns for your friend. Let's start. Okay, time is up. Let us stop here. <coughs> the next activity is an adventure, your cinema self. Let's do some imagination. Think of your success story being made a movie by Hollywood. So think about your life story or your success story. Think about your entrepreneurial venture, startup. Think about your journey. They will make it a film, turn it into a film in Hollywood. So it will be a more colorful version of yourself. Think of your cinema self. First, I want you to imagine, write the title of this movie. What would be the title? Please write it down. What would be the title? of your movie. 
let's try to wrap it up. Think of a title, write it down. Don't overthink it, just write up something. Whatever comes into your mind first, write it down. Try to make it an inspirational title, if you can. Let's move to the second question. What will be the film about? Think about your success story, your impact, your legacy. Try to summarize it. This will be also the basis of the plot. Think about the plot. Think about some turning points. What is the essence of the story? What could be some of the lessons? Try to summarize your success, your life, your entrepreneurial adventure. This will be also the plot of the movie. You can write quick bullet points. Don't try to write full sentences. Try bullet points. Quick brainstorming is fine. Just take some quick notes. Okay, let's give a two minute note. Please finish it. Let's move on to the next question. Who would play you? Think of an actor, actress. Who would play you? Write down. Okay, the next question. Three skills that your cinema self has. Think about three skills that your cinema self has and displays in the movie, but you do not have them yet. Okay, so you will think about three skills that your cinema self has, but you don't have these skills yet. What are those three skills? Write them down. The next question. Three places that you need to travel as your cinema self. Three places that you need to see around the world. Do you need to travel to? What are they? Okay. The next and conversation is about creativity. As you know, creativity is about combining unrelated ideas together. So let's say bike and toilet, and you get new products. So it is all about connecting unrelated things together, combining unrelated domains. It brings fresh ideas, creativity. So we will try to force ourselves to do this. Here are some examples, cow and sofa or giraffe and shoe, or dog and shoe, or pie and shoe. It's a bit extreme, yeah? But creativity is all about extremes. Umbrella and shoe, origami and shoe, feet and shoe. So the next activity is this on a piece of paper please um, take out a small piece of paper think of a product think of a thing a physical product write it down on a small piece of paper it can be anything lamp table mug pen pencil usb stick airplane small or large think of a product Write down that product, umbrella, shoe, write down that product. After you're done, please fold it, fold the paper, put P on it so that you will remember it's a product. On a second piece of paper, please take out a second piece of paper. You will now think about a service now. Think of a service such as hairdressing, cooking, filling taxes collecting garbage, hairstyling, think of a service, write it down. If you are done, again fold it, put S on it, so that you know that it's a service. So for this activity, please take your product idea and your service idea. Find your new members. You should be meeting new people for this activity. So please find your new team members, new cluster. Here is a Shark Tank video. Okay, let's go back to the exercise. If you have your 
product and service ideas in a paper. You should have them. And in your new cluster, please start working together. You will be working in clusters of four. You are working with new people now. Everybody find your cluster if you haven't found anyone yet. Find your new cluster. Form up teams of four. Each cluster should be four people. Is everyone ready? Have you joined your new cluster? Take your product and service with you. Collect together all the products together. Please collect them, all the products. Don't open them. Don't open them. They should be folded. All the piece, all the products. Collect them together. And all the services, collect them together as well. So you should have two piles in each team. One pile is the product pile. The second pile is the service pile. Okay? Please choose randomly two of them from each pile. Choose two of the papers from product randomly and two from service randomly. Select two of them out of four. Select two of them randomly. If you have chosen, please open them up. You should have two products and two services. Open them, read them aloud, share them. So what are your two products and two services? Share them. Okay, so in the next two minutes, I want you to generate a minimum of five different ideas, combining some of these products or services together. Even if they are not related, you will create some entrepreneurial business ideas. The challenge is combining these, some of these products or services together. You can combine two, three or four of them. Please write down all your ideas. Do the brainstorming as a team. One of you should be recording all the ideas. Write down all your ideas. You should have a minimum of four ideas. Ideally, ten ideas. Combine these product and service ideas together. Yeah, You will generate business ideas, combining them. At least five different business ideas. Write them down. If you have recorded five ideas at least, now I want you to choose the best one. As a team, choose the best idea and then prepare an elevator pitch, a short term pitch about that business idea. So choose one idea, please. As a team, develop, brainstorm your elevator pitch. How will you sell your idea? Try to sell it. Find a brand name, think of a cool name, think of some visuals. You might even create a poster. And think of your target market as well. So for your best idea, you are preparing an elevator pitch. Okay? Think of brand name, a cool name, a poster, your target market, try to sell your idea. The last activity we are finishing tonight is design thinking. Design thinking is becoming the new engine of innovation in companies. It is about creating new ideas, experimenting, making mistakes, having fun, thinking outside your comfort zone. So you want to create things that are desirable, but also feasible, technically feasible, but also economically viable that is profitable. And the sweet spot at the center, we call it human-centered design, human-centered design. And many businesses, such as Google, Apple, IDEO, are using 
design thinking to innovate. I included a video, you can watch it later at home. But also a small example of how it is used in Stockholm is here. So the problem is everybody uses the automated part, nobody uses the stairs. The public government in Stockholm, they want municipality, they want people to use the stairs more often for public health, for exercise. Using design thinking, how do you resolve this problem so that people do use the stairs more often? Here is what they did in Stockholm. And this is design thinking, how design thinking works. your enterprise, your company in this way. Try to create such experiences that people love those experiences. It is all about curating, designing memorable, positive experiences which enchant your customers. How can you do that? The methodology to that is design thinking. So the last challenge is to apply design thinking. You start with empathizing with your customer. What are they thinking? How are they feeling? And then you define the bigger problem. You generate a lot of solutions. You prototype and you test it. So the last activity of this evening, please take out your wallets. Take out your wallets. Put them on the table. Put your wallets on the table. Now, close your eyes. No, no, don't close your eyes. I want you to think about the next generation of the wallet. You will be designing in the same team, in the same cluster now. You will be designing in just a couple of minutes a new wallet. Think about how we use the wallet. We use it every day. What problem does this solve? How can you solve this problem? Try to redefine the problem. Try to think about the form and the function of a wallet. How can you redesign it? Generate ideas, innovate, and please try to visualize, brainstorm, record your thoughts. If somebody is good in drawing, try to draw your ideas. Come up with a brand name. What is the brand of your wallet? Who is your target group? 
What will be the price? Try to sell your wallet. Why should we buy your wallet? Why should we pay for it? Okay? So think about innovating the new wallet. Design the new wallet. Give it a brand name. Think of a price. Who will be your customer? Why should they buy it? Brainstorm your ideas, please. So you have four minutes to do this and then we'll finish. Okay? Okay, let's finish the activity. Now, sorry that we are running a bit late and we have run a bit late. This is the end of the workshop. Please try to fill out the form, feedback form. But if you do not have a hurry, you may leave if you want. If you want, it is getting late, you may leave. But I have some final videos, a couple of minutes to show you. If you want to stay, you're welcome to stay. If you want to leave, you can leave. But please fill out the form, feedback form. So the first one is Sir Dyson. Remember his TV ads that didn't just nip nip traditional machines? Even bags and filters were hopelessly cold. So I thought I'd try and design something better. He's the guy who decided to ditch the bag and show us the dirt. And when I showed it to the retailers, they said, forget it, no one wants to see the dirt. It's disgusting, it's revolting. Uh, but I like seeing the dirt, I like seeing it accumulate. By following his instincts, Dyson, now 65, created an innovative, engineering-driven powerhouse that also transformed the hand drive, retooled the space heater, and developed a powerful, bladeless fan. You need to literally put your head in there. He may be Britain's fourth richest man now. His fortune's estimated at more than four billion dollars. But there's been plenty of failure, rejection, and hardship along the way, beginning with the loss of his father when James was just nine. No, we went immediately really after leaving college to do my own business, to, to make my own money. Really good student. To do my own business. At school, no terrible one. I was much more interested in acting and doing my art. Lucky for him, he was a highly talented artist and got accepted into the Royal College of Art in London where he studied design. And I immediately saw that the products are partly about what they look like, but they're much more, much more important how they work. As a 22-year-old student, James sketched this unusual mushroom-shaped theater. He didn't get the money to make it, but it did lead into his first big break, a meeting with British industrialist Jeremy Fry. And he asked me, while I was at college, to design and engineer a high-speed landing craft that he had invented. He talked about the value of experimenting and making mistakes. I used to theorize about things. He said, shut up, just go and make it and see if it works. With several modifications, James helped create Fry's Sea Truck, a flat hulled watercraft that could carry heavy vehicles. They sold a few hundred to military outfits around the world. I suddenly saw what I wanted to do. You know, I, didn't, I wanted to control it all, I wanted to do all parts of it. I didn't want someone else making what I've designed. I didn't want someone else telling me what to design. But making a move from something as big as a military landing craft to something as small as a consumer product is a big leap. I wanted to do things for ordinary people, things that I use myself. So he began by reinventing the wheel, sort of. I was doing up a house in the country, and the wheelbarrow kept being stuck with its narrow wheel in, in the soft ground, and the cement slopped out of it. What was the solution? The solution was a ball, the ball instead of the wheels. He called it the ball barrel. Industry insiders balked at the ball and disapproved of the color. But with the help of his wife, Deirdre, and some investors, he managed to start his first company, Kirk Dyson, which made, marketed, and held the patent on his unconventional creation. So what I got out of it was that you can sell something that's very strange and different to, to people. They will buy it. They will, they'll trust you. But in 1979, and after several years of successful sales, James says a management disagreement got him kicked out of his own company. That's when he turned his attention to another household item that annoyed him, his vacuum cleaner. Anger and frustration, you had to bend down and pick things up, the vacuum cleaner wasn't sucking. As an engineer, I figured that it was the bag that was the problem. Soon, images of this local sawmill swirled in his head. That funnel shape on top is known as a cyclone. 
It separates dust using centrifugal force. But could it work on a smaller scale? Well, the, the first thing I did was to, on the kitchen table, as it were, to make a prototype of a cyclone, a small one that would fit on a vacuum cleaner. My first prototype appeared to work. He eventually realized he would need two cyclones, a bigger outside funnel to collect larger debris, and a thinner interior one to filter fine dust. But um, that you know, took me 5,127 prototypes. 5,000 individual destroyed failures. 5,000 failures. He endured as an entrepreneur. Remember that. Interesting failures, fascinating failures, because I learned something from each one. Were there times when you thought about giving up? Oh, well, yes. I mean, you know, the long dark days where I'm going out every day to my shed and getting covered in dust and coming back in and, and saying what a rotten day I'd had. But, you know, my wife was very supportive and she said, hey, you know, go back out there and make it work. By 1982, he felt he perfected his vacuum cleaner and went searching for a manufacturer to license it. Well, I approached the obvious people, the people who are my competitor. Um, and the oh, was the electoral watch, and then no one wouldn't see me uh, unless I signed a bit of paper saying that anything that came out of the conversation between them was there was theirs, you see. So I thought that was dangerous. But none of the others, like electoral watch and shop back, were willing to build it either. So I thought, well, if they're not going to do that, there's a great opportunity for me to do that. First, he would head to Japan. A company over there had agreed to license Dyson's design. It then built a vacuum called the G-Force, which hit the market in Japan in 1986. The royalty money James earned from the success of the G-Force gave him a boost towards creating his own vacuum cleaner and company, but he still needed more. I went to the venture capitalists and the government and all sorts of people, and they all rejected me. So in the end, I managed to persuade a bank to lend me a million pounds. So the big companies weren't willing to take the risk, but you were willing to risk everything. What well, afraid were you of failure? Well, I was terrified. But um, I wanted to do it. I believed in it. My friends thought I was mad. I mean, everybody thought I was mad. Undaunted, he founded his namesake company from his shed in 1992. The next year, his first machine, the DC-01, rolled off the production line, and 18 months later, the roughly $300 machine was the best-selling vacuum in the UK. A crazy idea Dyson wisely protected. You've got to have a passion. There's no point in going through all that agony and spending one minute if you can't stop other people making it. 43 million vacuums later, Dyson now employs nearly 4,000 people in about 60 offices worldwide, including this state-of-the-art global headquarters in England, where every product undergoes rigorous testing to ensure it will meet not just international requirements, but Dyson's own stringent standards. In 2011, the company boasted an annual revenue of more than one and a half billion dollars. Could you ever have imagined that? Ten million sounds like a lot, a billion is unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable too to Dyson is that, according to Forbes, in 2012 he hit number 255 on its list of the world's wealthiest people. And you're Sir James. Yes. Yeah. This is a English tradition. That's right. He's even been knighted by Her Majesty the Queen for his contribution to British business. His products also command impressive prices, anywhere from $200 to about $650, a cost that's not lost on this ambitious inventor who's constantly looking to improve our everyday lives. Seeing someone deciding to spend all that hard-earned money on what you made and the, you know, the, the thing you've invented, it's, it's the ultimate pleasure. It doesn't have to be such complex. On Shark Tank, they came up with a business idea. I'll just show one minute. They wrote messages on potatoes. Did it work? Yes, it did work. Next to this, delivers in a new twist. Sharks, my name is Alex Craig. And I'm Riyad Beckett. Our company is seeking $50,000 in exchange for 10% equity in our business. Look, Sharks, 
Over the years, you've heard all types of elaborate, intricate, and over-the-top pitches. Well, we're here to keep it simple, so let's take this pitch back to our roots. Sharks, our company is Potato Parcel, and we mail potatoes, and that's it. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> Maybe too simple. Explain it again. So, Potato Parcel is a brand new way of sending anyone you know a custom message written on a potato. It's just stupid on the stick, right? It's, it's actually stupid, stupid on the potato. potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a potato on yes. it? a potato. Oh, I thought the outfit was uh, a box. It comes in a bubbled envelope and uh, special packaging that we're going to include right here for you guys. That's for you. Thank you. Oh, it comes like this? You have a special potato. one. Oh. Kevin, Damon, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and What's Mark. It it says, Lori, right, would you Lori. be my sweet potato? Aww. Aww. Mine has a picture of Mwah. me. Mwah. Mine's a very handsome potato. And mine says there's nothing proprietary about this. And how true. And I think this potato is right. This potato is absolutely right. So, gentlemen, what happened to your careers? Uh, what? Okay, I'll stop here. But I will just say that this was a successful, very successful investment. They expanded into... UK as well. So it's a very successful business. So you don't have to have sophisticated technological ideas to become an entrepreneur. It is all about going after your passion and doing the thing that you do really innovatively, creatively. Sharing your passion with people. Like this guy. This is a famous guy. The famous one pound fish guy. I'll finish with him this beautiful evening. Fish, oh my God. <laughs> so he sells fish in London, but he loves singing. So he sells it through singing. He's doing class, isn't he? He's funny, isn't he? Come on, ladies, come on, ladies. One pound fish. Come on, ladies, come on, ladies. One pound fish. One pound fish. So he was so successful that he made an album. Okay, I'll stop here. Good night, everyone. Thanks for attending. Thank you. Thank you. It was amazing to have you this evening here. And I wish you best of luck in your entrepreneurial journeys. Please pursue them. Don't give up. Just wanted to extend our thanks to all the volunteers who are helping with the uh, evening. Uh, starting from here, Turul Bay, and all the uh, people who are helping with the uh, who are helping with the uh, pizzas and the other drinks. Uh, I can't name all of them right now, but thanks to all of you. Uh, you made a great uh, evening, and uh, I hope to uh, host you again next time.